Father, we praise you, we glorify you, we magnify you, we thank you for this day. Hallelujah. On September 19th. Thank you, Lord God, for your strength. Thank you for your direction. Thank you for your empowerment. Thank you for all the things that you're doing and have yet done. Thank you for the strength that you've given us unto our bodies. Thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to place our feet on solid ground this morning. Thank you that you woke us up with purpose, on purpose. It's not by happenstance that we are still here, but we're here upon this day to give praise, to give worship. Lord God, allow us to come into that fullness of what you called us to be, that we are centered in you. Lord, what is it that you desire this morning? How can we be a servant unto you? Lord God, it's not all about our needs and our wants, but Lord, we're coming to bring worship unto you. True worship, those who will worship in spirit and truth, led by the spirit, strengthened by the spirit, directed by the spirit. Lord God, we lay down the flesh desires. Lord God, we put them under our feet. We crucify the flesh today, Lord God, and says it has no demean, it has no legal ground, but we stay ourselves on solid ground, which is Christ, the solid right that we stand on today. Lord God, we are not going back, but we're moving forth. We're going on the attack. We're not on the defense, but we're moving on offense. We thank you this day that we are declaring the cream, that we are commanding our morning, the coming order. That means everything that's been delayed, everything that's been denied, everything that's been held up, Lord God, we're calling it forth. We're calling it unto us. You said we should decree a thing and it shall be established. We declare right now, this morning, as your children, we're moving into a place of wholeness, Father. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing out of place. We thank you that we stand in the presence of the Almighty God. And in your presence, you have declared this fullness of joy and that your right hand's pleasures forevermore. We thank you, Lord God, for the benefits that's been allowed to us this morning. You said in your word daily, do you load us with benefits? So we receive our benefits this morning. As you said, our sins are forgiven. Yesterday's gone. Today is afresh. We don't hold on to the past mistakes, errors, and faults. We thank you that our slate has been cleansed as we come before you. You said you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As your word has declared, Lord God, you said that you sent your word and healed them all. We thank you that this morning that we can declare and decree healing in our bodies. We thank you that every sickness, disease has no place in us. It has no jurisdiction in us. We thank you that every father, bloodline, disease, sickness that has followed us is being uprooted right now. We thank you, Lord God, that no oppressive spirit, depressing spirit should be upon us or around us. Father, you said that we have the authority and power to trap upon the serpent, the scorpion, the order, and the lion. This morning, we trample upon every spiritual wickedness in our life, and we declare and say, get out and move out from our homes, move out from our bodies, move out from our mind. We thank you right now. We are untangling and unwinding every restriction, every chain, every barrier that's been placed in our way. As your word declares, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises, we have the power to condemn. We condemn the voice of the enemy right now. We condemn the voice saying we wasn't going to make. We condemn the voice saying that we're going to die prematurely. We condemn that voice that says that our marriage will end, Lord God, in divorce. No, we condemn every negative word that was sent our way, every arrow that was sent our way. We uplift it right now and we break that stronghold in the mind. We break the stronghold and the strong man we bind right now and we send to the outermost darkness. We declare that we are whole. We declare that we are free. We, Your word declares who the sun sets free is made free indeed. I thank you, Lord God. There will be no partial healing. There will be no partial deliverance, but we shall be a wholeness. Lord God, as you said, will thou be made whole? We declare wholeness in our life. We declare wholeness in our 
bodies. We declare wholeness in our mind. We come against every restriction that is limited us from getting everything that you said belongs to us. We take back by force. You said many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. You said you never seen the righteous forsaken, nor the sinners begging for bread. We don't have to beg, but we come boldly to the throne of grace. We thank you for the bread upon our table. We thank you, Lord Father, clothes upon our back that you said seek first the kingdom and all these things shall be added. We thank you, Lord God, you are not a God of subtraction, but you are a God of multiplication. We thank you that we are receiving that multiplication now. We're coming to that surplus that you have for us. Lord God, open up the windows for heaven. Lord God, open up the surplus that's in the heaven ranks as you release that was rightfully ours as the sons, as daughters, as those who are under the covenant of the new blood that's been speaking better things than Abel. We under the blood of Jesus Christ and the blood speaks great things over our life that we are healed, that we are delivered, that we are set free, that we are part of God's family. No longer are we off to the side. No longer are we stepchildren. No longer are we Gentiles, but we are the spirit reconnected, re, re, reconnected to the bloodline, which is Jesus. The old blood from our fathers is not our portion. The old mentality of our forefathers is not our portion. Our hearts is renewed today. We thank you for the transformation of the heart. Lord God created us a heart of flesh, that, that stony heart that was rebellious against you, that stony heart that was walking in iniquity and walking in sin is no longer our portion. We thank you this morning that you are cleansing us. Lord God, wash us with hyssop, wash us with the oil, the fresh oil, as it ran from Aaron's beard. We declare and decree that we are anointed, that we are appointed for such a time as this. We thank you for the cleansing in our souls. We thank you for the cleansing in our bodies. We thank you for the cleansing in our mind. We are not restricted by the old things of yesterday. We're not restricted from our past, from five years ago, 10 years ago, but we break those barriers. We break those molds. We break those holes. I declare that you are a new creation in Christ. <clears throat> new life. New beginnings. That you will birth forth that which God has called you into. We command in our morning that everything that's out of order will come in order. We shake the foundation that's been plaguing us. We eliminate everything that's been plaguing us. No more plagues. I speak against the virus that's attacking your body. It has no place in you. I speak against the pestilence, the spiritual pestilence that flies in a new day. It has no place in you. I speak unto the authority that God has given to you that you shall trample upon everything that is not in the Lord. I speak. Whatever you put your hands to in this season is going to prosper. Wherever your feet shall tread, it shall prosper. I declare that you have favor with God and men. Grace is yours. Mercy is yours. This new day, we come into alignment with what God says. We don't worry what the media is saying. We don't attain to the fake news. We don't attain or we don't listen to the words of Satan. But we listen to the words of our Father who says, I place you as the head, not the tail, above only and not beneath. As I said in my word, the blessings of the Lord is upon you that makes you rich and adds no sore. As the word has declared, I will give you the power. I will give you the authorization to obtain wealth that he may establish the covenant. I declare in your life that you are a covenant child with covenant promise in this covenant time that you will come on time as the word has declared. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. You are not behind. I declare that you are on time for we serve our on time God. I speak as he declared. He will do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. So Lord God we do not think small this morning but we think the impossible for you make all things possible. We think Thank you, Lord God, that you are shifting the dynamics in our homes this morning. We think that our homes are whole. Our children are home. 
for me in my house, we shall serve the Lord. We declare a servant mentality. As the Lord said, those who desire to be great, allow them to be servants of all. We declare we have a servant mindset that's going to serve you, that's going to worship, that's going to praise, that's going to elevate, that's going to change the culture of our family. I speak to those who've been saved for such a time as this, that you are the beacon of light in your ch at your house. You are the beacon of light in your family, that you are that city upon the hill, that God preordained you before the beginning of time, to place you in the time for such a time as this. I speak unto you, woman of God, that you are empowered. I speak to you, man of God, that you are empowered, that you are fortified, that you are justified, that the almighty God is backing you. I speak to the angels that been assigned to your assignment, assigned to your ministry, assigned to your business. As they go forth and they war for you, we speak that we are warring against every attack and every agenda of the enemy, every plot to take you down, every plot to slow you down, every trap that was set for you in this year, we declare the decree that is being unraveled, that is being exposed. We thank you that we see the plan of the enemy and we're not ignorant. And every weapon that God has given us is not not carnal, but mighty for the pulling down of stronghold. We pull down the stronghold of the mind this morning. Your mind is at ease. Your mind is at rest. Your mind is not stressed. Your mind is not oppressed. Your mind is not being subjected to the old things or what you've done in the past. I speak that you have no condemnation. I speak that you have ever revelation. You have revelation. You have elevation into a new place where God has called you. You are, you are rising to new heights. You are rising to new dimensions. You are rising to the place that God has called you into. You are breaking barriers. You are breaking records. You are setting the course for the next five and ten years. I speak that every tear that you have flowed out of your eyes, that God is drying the tears up right now and placing you in a place of safety, that he's placing you in a place of peace. He's placing you in a place of joy. Joy. He's removing the sorrow. He's moving the burden. He's removing and the yoke. And he's yoking you up with him this morning. I declare that the yoke of the Lord is easy. I declare that his burden is easy and light. And as you recenter yourself and reconnect, everything that was rejected, everything that was held up, everything that was bound up is about to be released. As you make the determination that you're going to serve the Lord and not serve Satan, that you're going to be in the place of humbling yourself. As the word declares, those people who humble themselves, he will restore the land. As we repent, turn unto the Lord, turn back to our first love, turn back to who God has called us to be, that we're moving into the place that no enemy can attack, no enemy can restrain, no enemy has no place. We declare the decree this morning. We take back our dominion. We take back our authority. As the Lord says, be fruitful, multiply, subdue, have dominion. That is your portion. We go back. What Jesus has said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. We step into the abundance of what Christ says. I speak to the spirit man that's in you that come forth. I speak to the, the real you, the one that God has called from the beginning of time. Yet before you was in your mother's womb, he knew you and ordained you. I say that you are ordained for this. You have been justified. You have been solidified by the almighty God. The, you have got your confirmation. Now move in your elevator. Move in your transformation. You will not be the same person you was last year. You will not be the same woman, the same man. I declare that you're moving forth. You're moving into your destiny. You're moving into your purpose. You're moving into your assignment. You are no longer going to be silent, but God is giving you a voice that will be heard. God is giving you a face that will be seen. Everything that restricted when you tried it, it didn't work. I declare and decree. You will have that moment. Operate in faith. As the Lord told Peter, try it again. Put it to the other side. This time it's going to work. I declare an overhaul is coming to you. That which was delayed, that which was promised to you, is coming to you. That's the word declares. When the thief is found, he must restore sevenfold. I speak sevenfold 
blessing and turn around coming to you this morning. I speak an uplifting coming to you. I speak a shifting to your mind coming to you. I speak that you will no longer be, de be delayed. You will no longer be denied. You will no longer be misused or mistreated, but God is bringing you into a place that he's putting you in a place where your enemy shall be your footstool. He's putting you in a place and making a table in front of you that your table is set right now, that the goodness of the Lord will operate in your life. They will see you operate and manifest and to be the woman of God that God has called you to be, to manifest and be the man of God that God has called you to be. You will not be restricted. You will not be restrained. I speak change coming to you right now. I speak promotion coming to you right now. I speak elevation coming to you right now. I speak the wisdom of God in your life. You will no longer be confused. You will no longer be hindered. You will no longer be restricted. I speak divine favor that you will know what to do in this season. No more guesswork. No more just wandering around. No longer being a boat in the water without a sail. I speak that God is pushing you forward and not pushing you back. As you put your hands to the plow, I speak you shall not look back. I speak it's forward and acceleration. I speak acceleration over your life. Do not feel like you're behind because God is accelerating the time. He's placing you right on time. And he said, I will restore the years. The canker on the caliper, the great army that I set before you, and you shall eat and be satisfied. I speak in this season. You are being satisfied. You are being satisfied. You will be satisfied. You will have more than enough. No more just having enough to get by week after week, month after month. I declare those same things that plagued you, those same bills that restrained you, the same hindrance that came day after day, no longer has a place in you. I speak overflow. Pressed down, shaking together, running over. Will man get unto you this season? It's the season of overflow. It's the season of abundance. It's the season to move into position what God has for you. I speak there's no restriction for you are a spirit and a spirit man in a physical body. I speak that you've taken dominion over your household. You've taken dominion in your community. You've taken dominion in your workplace. Wherever God has set you, I speak that the blessing of the Lord follows you everywhere you go. You have favor like never before. You have an enrichment empowerment like never before. When they see you, they see the Lord Jesus. I speak that the fear that was upon you is no longer plaguing you. I speak the resistance that was coming against you no longer will hit you. I come against all the trauma of yesterday. I come against all the trauma of your childhood. I say it has no more place in you. I speak that you walk in forgiveness this morning. You walk in wholeness this morning. I speak that as the Lord is forgiving you right now, you are forgiving those who hurt you. I come against the hurt. I come against every rejection. I come against that spirit of bitterness the spirit of envy. I come against any idol that you have made and I say it has no more place in you. I speak life over your life. I speak that you're being empowered. I say light be wherever darkness is, wherever darkness is in your heart, wherever darkness is in your mind, that this morning that you have the life of God, you are refined, you are redeemed, and you are set free. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have commanded our morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's say amen, type amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Arise, shine, for this is your time. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad. And why? Because we have breath. You got breath, you got life, you got life. You still got an opportunity to complete your assignments. Blessings of jail givers, and welcome to Arise shine morning devotional and prayer i like to say we don't have powerful prayer but we pray to a powerful god who can do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think and some versions say imagine where is it that you want god to take you to where is it that you want your god, your life to shift to think on these things meditate on where you want to be and how you want to move in this season god is giving someone a grace this morning to become 
a grace to move and a grace to do. What he dropped in my spirit, a grace to become is the version that you are right now is not the version that God sees you at. You may see lack. You may see a person who's been on attack. You may see a person that's been weary and held back and held down. But God sees a queen. God sees a king. And God wants to elevate and bring that change. And it will be nothing on your part, but on who he is. So trust in the Lord. I declare that you will become the woman of God, the man of God. And God's given you a grace to move. You will move into position to do what you've been called to do. No longer being stagnant, no longer being hindered. Yes, the enemy could hinder you, restrain you. Yes, decisions hindered you and restrain you. But God is reversing that thing and it's called through his grace. Unmerited, undeserved favor is coming to you. This is God's doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. And then God's going to give you the ability to do the thing that you thought you couldn't do. You knew you had the, uh, you knew that you were supposed to do it, but your mind kept telling you that you can't. Situations kept saying that you won't. Things kept coming against you that you couldn't do. But God, this morning, I'm declaring to someone that you will have the grace to do that which you've been called to do. Which man is impossible, but with God, all things is possible. What, I'm, what am I saying? The thing that God has called you to do, what God has called you in to do, woman of God, hear me by the unction of the spirit. You have the authority. You have the backing. Man of God, you have the authority. You have the backing from the almighty God with grace to do it. You will finish this race. You will move forward, not backwards in the name of Jesus. I want you guys to share if you have it. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for getting the hearts up because we're going somewhere. The power of God is in here. I was in prayer last night. And like I said, today on the September 19th is my birthday. So I'm believing for something miraculous and power. We already started with empowerment of the prayer and your day is commanded today. Um, but there's something more that God wants to give to what we've been talking about is not tolerating it but eliminating we're not tolerating debt we're not tolerating sickness we're not tolerating the same status quo as as what has been <clears throat> as the lord showed me and i spoke to you uh like two weeks ago don't worry about what it looks like but call it what it's what it's going to be what is it that you want it to be in your life? I see what this is. I know that it's a, something's going on in your body. I know something's going on in your mind. I know something's going on in your home. But we call those things that be not as though they were. I want you to understand this morning that God is telling you, don't worry about what it looks like, but call it what you want it to be. Um, one thing he showed me and then when I was meditating early this morning, I remember he said, "Is don't. Mm, let me share it like this. You know, when people, we get in situations, um, people, you may not want to die, right? You want to fill out the fulfillment of what God has called you. Amen. We all do. But we all want to get to heaven one day. We got that. But we want to complete our assignment. God said, it's not about not wanting to die, but it's about wanting to live. See, I changed the course. It's not that you don't want to be broke, but you declare that I am rich. Not rich for my own self because, Lord, I need to do something more than I want to been doing. I want to change the dynamics of my family. I don't want to stay the same course that I've been in. So what I do is I change the way what I speak. It's not that I don't want to die, but I declare I shall live. It's not that I want, I'm tired of being broke, but I declare that I'm rich. And He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the weak say, I'm strong. Let the sick say, I'm healed. You have to say that what you want, not what you don't want. He know you we all know you don't want that. We don't want that. We don't want an early grave. No, we want a we want a long life where I satisfy you. So we declare and decree what we want. We don't want our marriages broken broken discuss it no will we say and what we declare i speak that my marriage is a godly fear in marriage that we're standing on the word of god that we're standing on the rock which is our counsel which is the holy spirit who's leading us and directing us we stand on what god has said to bring the change amen let's go to the devotional romans 12 verse 1 
I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. We bring in these temples under subjection of who God is in our life, that he is Lord, that he is King. Amen. This is the reasonable thing. Lord, my life no longer belongs to me. I'm handing it over to you. And verse 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is. What is what? The good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Something you have to prove. Something that we need to be proving. Not accepting the status how we have been over the couple of years. Not accepting how things been moving in 2024. But we have to transform into that position that God has called us into. See, we have to renew the mind to know who's helping us, who's alongside of us, who we truly are when it comes to things of God. We limit ourselves because we get, we have gotten stagnant, we got complacent because we've been in a certain place for too long. We have allowed certain individuals to speak over us for too long and our mind has been corroded and our mind has been corrupted and we don't see the true divine nature of who we are. But he said, be not conformed to the world. The world says you need to do it this way. The world will say to some, oh, you need to go to go to school, go to college, get a job. Get, and systematically put you on the system that maybe that's not the system of God had called for you. We can get so raveled up and so complacent that we do things the same way but things have not been changing what caused you not to move forward man of god what caused you not to move forward woman of god is i said this yesterday about the stronghold of the mind that your mind has not been changed so that's why you believe in something more than what you have but you've been staying in the same cycle doing it the same way and it hasn't changed but you're frustrated you're praying you probably prayed with me the last couple weeks. But God was showing me. He said, you have to bring the shift into your mind. Don't tolerate what's been going on. As I was meditating, the Lord was showing me something. He said, some of us, I'm just saying, and I'm just putting it, speaking unto you. But he's speaking to me. But saying, a lot of times what happens is we get in a place and we get comfortable. We get comfortable and we make What's not normal be normal. It's not normal that we should be check to check. It's not normal with sickness in our body. It's not normal to be fighting and arguing all the time. But we make that the norm and we and we kind of nurture that system because our mind is used to it. So that it makes it harder to break out of it. But how do we break out of it? It's by transforming our mind. Let our minds be renewed. By allowing our bodies to become a liver sacrifice. We say, I like to say this. I said, this house should be a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. Now, I know the context where that scripture is being taken, so relax. But I say that over myself. I said, this house should be a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. I'm not going to make it a den of thieves. How do you make a den of thieves? I'm not going to engage and lock into sin. I'm not going to engage and lock into things that will not edify and push me to a higher heights than I need to do. And some of the resistance that you're feeling is the things that you're holding on to. Some of the resistance that's been in your life is the things that you're still doing. I, I gave, uh, someone asked me when I say uh, a curse without a cause cannot stand. Meaning we curse ourselves and don't realize it. We curse ourselves by doing things and putting ourselves in places that we shouldn't be. Doing the things we shouldn't do. Now that gives the avenue for the enemy to attack, resist, put a restraint on you. That's why the by that's why the word says he says, let's go back. What does it say? He said, I that beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, 
acceptable unto God, which is the reasonable service. He says it's reasonable for us to be presenting our bodies and doing the right things in our body with our body, not entangling them with harlots, not sleeping around, not drinking, not fornicating, not doing these certain things that bring restriction in our life. We won't. We don't want to tolerate sin. We want to eliminate sin. We don't want to tolerate the same status that we've been in, but we want to eliminate it. And we say, Lord, this body is the body of the Holy Spirit. This temple is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I don't want to remain in it. Believe me, this is no condemnation to nobody, but this is elevation. You want to transform. You want to break those patterns. You want to break those cycles. But when we say, Lord, I'm presenting my body as a living sacrifice unto you. God, the first time you did that thing, the thing that you're in right now, the thing that you've been doing for X amount of time, God's aware of it. But he's saying, when you make the decision and say, Lord, I want to start living for you. I want to start giving it all to you. I want to break those chains, the barriers that's been on me. There was a plot for your life. As soon as you came into this earth, the enemy was trying to take you out. He found he couldn't take you out there, so he'll delay you. If you notice the patterns that's in your life, it's the same patterns that's been in your life. There's nothing new under the state under the sun. A temptation is only a temptation when it's a pleasing unto you. We're not going to tolerate it, but we're going to eliminate it. You can't tolerate, you can't, and you can't entice somebody who doesn't like to drink. That's not what, so if you're not a drinker, never drink. If you never smoke, never like doing those things, that wasn't your thing. But what about some other things? Maybe sexual pleasures is your thing. And you continue going on the same cycle. And you're like, Lord, I'm sorry. I want to keep doing this. And you don't want to keep doing it. But you have to present your body. Say, no, this temple is the temple of the almighty God. And I'm making a decision. I'm making a decision. I'm not tolerating, but I'm going to eliminate it. I'm coming, I'm coming all the way in. I don't want no, I don't want anything restraining me or restricting me no more upon this year. It's the choices we make that keeps us in the places that we've been. It's the choices we make that keeps us in not moving forward in the things that we want to do. And we're trying our hardest. But we have to let me show you. I said this yesterday. There was a battle going on. Someone took something that wasn't supposed to be theirs. Somebody's getting delivered right now. They took something that wasn't supposed to be and they hit it. When they went to war, they got demolished. Israel got demolished. Why? Because God says, don't touch that for not yours. He said to destroy all those things. Do you understand things that we touch, things that we engage in, things that we do can bring a restraint in our life and we're trying to move forward, but we can't seem to move forward and we don't realize what's going on? Listen, you are a new creation. You are a new creature. The blood of Christ is in you. I remember my father, God rest his soul, he's resting and he's not, he's in heaven. Uh, my father said this. He said, you know, I'm moving in ministry, doing things. He's like, he's like, son, you're, you're, you're doing good things. But remember, you got my blood. I didn't know what he meant at that time. But then I realized what he was saying. There was still certain things that was holding on. Still certain things that. I wasn't fully committed in things that I could see that was resonating from my father. But I have a new father now, which is the Lord Jesus. And we break those things that's been connected to us. We don't tolerate them. We eliminate them. So I have, I'm the righteousness of Christ redeemed through the blood of the lamb. You're redeemed through the blood of the Lamb. You don't have to continue going on that same cycle, that same pattern. You don't have to go going down that same road that you've been on. Because it's already hard enough because it's been a bounty place on your head to stop you already. Don't give the enemy any more ammunition to try to come against you. The thing that you have to do is bring restriction and say, I'm disciplined on this thing. Because God has given me the ability to overcome. I don't have, I place these things under my feet, whatever it is. 
you, we all know the thing that we have to stop and do. Why? Because God has a plan for you. God has a plan for me. And he wants us to reach our destiny. So we present our bodies a living sacrifice. And Lord, I'm willing to submit. I'm willing to commit. I'm willing to go all the way in. Show me in the way what I need to do. Expose those things I may not know of. Show me clearly the path that you have set for me. And then he's going to tell you, you have to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Cultivate the mind of things that's been hindering and restraining you. Because the way that you see yourself is the way that you are right now. But God has something more for you. Don't see yourself as depressed. Don't see yourself as the overweight. Don't see yourself as the broke. See yourself that what God has called you into, that you are the rich, that you are the blessed, that you are the help. And as you are being transformed in your mind, you will start moving forward. You will start going forward. You will start making progression. You will start being dedicated. You will start being committed. You will start being uplifted. You will start seeing the shift that you're looking for. As I said earlier, the grace to become. The man of God who you are is already inside you. The woman of God who you've been called to be is already inside you. We're just releasing that person. But we have to cultivate some things that's been blocking you got the ability to go forth in ministry. You have the ability to start that business. You have the ability to have a home that is uh, uh, flourishing, that's thriving, not just surviving. You have the ability in you, but you've been in a place for so long, you, it became the norm. It became the familiar, you're so familiar with not making it. You're so familiar with making the same mistake with the with, with wrong men. You got so caught up by doing the same thing that you're always late on the bills. You're always late doing. And the cycle continues. But we don't tolerate it any longer. We eliminate it. Listen clearly. We eliminate the things that's hindered, restrained. We say it no longer has a place in my life. I'm 45 now. I can say, man, I thought things was going to be further along. I thought things was going to be this or be that. But as the Lord said, he restored the days. He redeems the time. So what should have took? Yep, I should have been in a certain place at this age, but God says I will accelerate as I make the commitment, as I become a living sacrifice, as I renew my mind. I have the mind of Christ. Acceleration has come to someone who says, I renew my mind. I don't get bogged down by where I am right now, but I look into my destiny. He said with long life will he satisfy. It don't take salvation, eternal life. Jesus did what he needed to do in three years. So, I feel the spirit of the Lord. For those who felt that you're behind, those who felt like you wasted so much time, I just posted, go on to YouTube, go on the link. No more wasted time. You might have wasted time, but you're not out of time. And since God is an extended time, we want to make sure we're doing the right thing. How do we do the right thing? We got to get our minds transformed. Man, Father, who you call me to be? Who am I? Where should I be? Who should I be connected to? Who is my wife? Who is the person that you have called by my side? Don't waste time just doing everything. But God, mm, I speak this to someone. When God brings that right, you're going to know that you're going to know who it is this time. It's not going to be any uncertainty. And it's not going to take a long time. And things will start to move just like that. Man of God. Woman of God, when you get on God's timeline, the thing that you've been called to do will start to accelerate. Favor will come to you. Provision will come to you because God backs his plan, not our own plan. He don't have to fund your own rogue plan. He doesn't have to fund, but he will back. When you be about his business, he'll take care of your business. As he sent the disciples out, he said, don't take this. Don't take, don't take money. Don't take this or that. He said, go forth. I'm going to show you the provision of the kingdom. We're in a new kingdom. We're in this world, but not others' world. But what did he say? He said, be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to how this world system doing it. Because you will run out of time. You will be in your 80s and 90s and look back and say, man, 
I wish I would have done. But when you don't conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, God gives you acceleration. God gives you favor. God puts you in the place that you're supposed to be. As he told Abraham, go to a place that I'm going to show you. Get out of the land of familiar. Stop doing the same thing that you've been doing, but get into the position, the place where God has called you into. And as you make the determination, I need, I need to get away from the old systematic system. In this old system, we was idolizing. In this old system, we was complaining. In this old system, we was under worry. In this old system, we was under debt. In this old system, we was under constant cycles. But as you make a decision, I'm trans, I'm leaving from the familiar and going into uncharted territories. I'm going to where God has called me into. I got to be around with people who speak positive. I got to be around people who have a vision, who has a plan, who wants more in their life. I can't stay with the same status quo of people who are not making no shift, who's not making no change, who's not bringing edification. I need to make a change. And that's how the mind begins to transform. Who you follow, who you listen to, who you're around renews the mind. What you listen to, what you're watching will renew the mind. And as you're watching the things that brings edification, as you're watching right now, transformation is happening to somebody. Something is going to the inside and saying, you know what? I hear what the man of God saying. I need to make some moves. I've been in the same place too long. I'm listening to the same thing. I'm watching the same thing. And I see no change. You've been under the same You've been under the same ministry for all these years and nothing's changed in your life. You may need to say, Lord, this is where I need to be at. You've been listening to the same and nothing has changed. I do never talk about any man of God, but I do speak unto to the life of people. You have to be somewhere where life is being produced. You have to be somewhere where change is being produced. You need to know, Lord, who is my mentor? Who is my spiritual father? Where do where is it that I need to be? Because if you're not no change after years and years, and you remain the same, and you praise dancing, and you and you're running around, and you're doing this, but no change has happened, but the same thing is going on in your life. Oh, we heard a good word, but the word didn't shift; it didn't change. You still broke. You're not watching things that's going to edify and give you proper education on finances, proper education on health. Pro proper. See, we have no excuses any longer. This tool, this phone that I'm on right now, you can get the information you need. It's at your fingertips, but you got to be determined that I need to change what I'm listening to, what I've been watching, who I've been talking to. If the person that you're always talking to is good to laugh, I like to laugh. I like, I'm a joker. I like to tell jokes. I, I like doing those things, but it's a proper time and place. We don't have time to keep on wasting time. So in order for me to ele elevate, to be in the place where God is calling me to be, I got to make some shifts. I got to make some change. We can't just keep having birthdays coming in and out. And you're looking back and another five years has passed, but nothing has changed in your life. No, it was time out for that. When you make a determination to be diligent, because some of us are facing Mountains. Some of us are facing challenges because we've been marked. And God says you have to push and celebrate beyond what you've been doing. You can't do the things the same way. The prayer life has to change. Your meditation life has to change. Meditate on these things. What have you been meditating on? The mind can't shift and change if you're meditating on the wrong things. If you're meditating on the problem instead of the problem solver, look unto the hill. Look unto the Lord. Meditate on these things. Will it ever be of a good report? He says, meditate on this. Why? Because then the mind starts to shift. Remember the things that God brought you out and brought God brought you through. These are the things that brings the change. And be not conformed to this world, but you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good. Good things should be happening. I'm showing people the God in my life because they seen the change in my life. They see that I once was on alcohol. I once was on drugs. I once was in pornography. I once was on um, um, out there in the world in these streets. I once was. But now a shift has changed. 
I can't remain the same. I can't do the things that I used to do. That taste don't, it don't taste the same. It don't feel the same. I, I, I'm getting a conviction from the Holy Spirit to not be in that place, not to talk to that person, to block that person, to disconnect from that person. These the people are not going to elevate me. These people are not going to change. I need to be around people who's bringing shift and change. Now, good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for your life. Beloved, I wish you prosper and be in good health just as your soul prosper. A good friend's going to tell you what you're doing is not right. A good friend's going to tell you you don't need to be in that place no more. No, they're not going to sit there and coddle your wrongdoing. When I don't see something right, I say it to my... No, you, we're not doing right. Nah, you need to stop that. Don't be tempted. Bro, you already know. That's a door that you don't need to open up. Those are the people who will help you in this season. Those are people who will get you to the place that you have seen and experienced the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, and you shall see the goodness of the Lord. God, because he's merciful in grace and you've you held on, you held out, but your arms are getting tired. You're getting tired. You're saying, when are we going to move past this? Why are we still dealing with the same thing? God says, the renewing of the mind. I have to cultivate your mind. You're still thinking the same. You don't know who you are and whose you are. You don't realize that I've called you for more. You don't have to stay there. I know it seems tough, but you will break through and you will not give up. No more tolerating it. Eliminate it. Eliminate the things you need to do. Set the course of the things you know that God has called you into. Prioritize the word. Prioritize your prayer. Prioritize your assignment. Prioritize getting your body in health. When you look better, you feel better. All this stuff stems. When your house is cleansed, when your, when your physical house is clean, you can think better. When you, I keep my car clean. The year in my car, you won't even know. You'll think it's a 2024. It's clean. So my mind could be clear. Room, bedroom, house. Clear the clutter out. In order to renew your mind. Clear your workspace out in order to clear your mind. Where you go to meditate, where you go to meet with the Lord, clear that space out. Let it be clear. Because the representation of stuff around you is showing you where you at. If stuff is disbobbled, out of order, if you got a crack on your phone and your life is all cracked up, look, spiritual things, y'all got to pay attention to things around you. You always feel tired. Expire. I want you to do this. I'm going to make a shift. Little shifts. I'm going to start eating better. I'm going to start moving forward. I'm going to do, go to the gym. I'm going to start reading more. I'm going to start studying more. I'm going to start putting more emphasis on the thing that God has called me to do instead of doing things that's only pleasurable. Things that's only that's, doesn't amount to anything. I'm cutting down my time on social media. You got time to write that book. You got time to put the thing in motion. You do have time to go to the gym. You do have time to spend with your children. You do have, to, but you have to eliminate things that doesn't bring progression in your life. For the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God in your life is not to stay where you've been at, but it's to move above. It's to be above, not beneath. It's to be the head, not the tail. It's to shift the shift the dynamics of where your life is to where God needs you to be. That means making some tough decisions, cutting some things off, cutting some people off. Don't tolerate it, eliminate it. I tolerated you in my life too long. I, I see no progression with you. I see no change in you. You speaking well, you saying well, but I don't see no change in you. Bye, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. Pray for a distance. Family member, I pray for you. I have no problem with his love because God says for love and kind is love, but I can't be surrounding myself with you. You're toxic. We need to eliminate the tox 
toxic people things out of our life. I was talking to an a, a older lady. I was, I was, we was just speaking. And it was, what the Lord showed me, don't let politics bring division. We're kingdom children on a kingdom assignment. Now, if you want to vote for who you want to vote for, that's fine. If we can't have a discussion without an argument, then we don't need to have a discussion. There's nothing wrong with having different dialects. We see different viewpoints. But if you always want to argue with me over something, then I don't need to speak to you. If you're not open-minded, even when it comes to that, the enemy comes to still kill and destroy. If you can't see where God is in a party that you vote for, then that's fine. It's vote for whoever you feel that you want to vote for. I want to line up what the word says for me. I want you to line up what the word says for you because we are believers. I'm not going to argue. We're not going to fight. For what, what are we doing that for? Because division will come into the household. We have different opinions. Okay. I still love you. These guys not putting no monies in our pockets. Food. As a, as a kingdom citizen, God's still going to provide no matter who gets in there. Is certain individuals better for the country? Absolutely. I believe that. But I believe in kingdom citizens, go back to the first love. Go back to the kingdom of God and say, Lord, you are the provider. So no matter who gets in there, we're going to be good. Good and perfect will of God means my children, my family don't sit there and suffer. But we don't, we don't, we don't worry. We don't be stagnant. We don't be complacent depending on who's in the office. We're children of God, people of God. And we're here as kingdom citizens on assignment, as ambassadors, as royal priesthood. You have the ability to move forward, to go forward, to thrive in any economy with anybody who's in office. God will bless you. God will elevate you. God will place you in position and grant you favor. But understand, we don't tolerate how things used to be and how things was. We put kingdom over politicians. We put kingdom over religion. We put the kingdom of God in our home. We don't follow the status quo on what the world says, how we should raise our children. We raise our children according to what the word says. We raise our family according to what the word says. We thrive in the system that was created for us. We're in this world, but not of this world. He said, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. By the renewing of your mind. The only way you can renew your mind is knowing what the will of God is for your life. It's getting into the word of God. Understand what the plan that God has for your life. Yet before you was born, I knew you and ordained you. This is the place we have to go to. We're not complacent. We don't complain, we praise. We don't worry, we worship. We don't fear, we operate in faith. The good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for your life. We don't tolerate it any longer, but we eliminate it. We eliminate the strongholds of the minds that kept us bound, that kept us restrained. That said, you're going to be like your father, we cursed it at the root. You're going to be like your mother, we cursed it at the root. The mind that says oppression is your portion, we cursed it at the root. Depression, bipolarness, sickness. Disease, we curse it at the root. That's not your portion. And I don't care how long it's been playing in your life. As you listen to me today and says, I don't accept it. I don't I don't accept it. I don't tolerate it. I eliminate it out of my life. Don't accept the words. Don't accept that sickness. That means you're going to have to get, let me say it like this, you're going to have to get vicious. You're going to have to get serious. You're going to have to say, this thing stops. The lack in my life stops. The hurt in my life stops. The sickness in my life around my family stops. God is saying, the reason why it bothers you so much, man of God, woman of God, is because God is calling you to do something about the things that's been going on and plaguing. And you got to get no tolerance for nonsense. Say no tolerance for nonsense. Have no tolerance for nonsense in your life any longer. I'm not staying here. I'm not staying at this weight. I'm not staying at this economic 
uh, uh, status quo that I've been in. I'm not going to be on the progress level. I'm not going to be right there and just making it by. No, I'm going to thrive. I'm going to do. I'm not going to just survive, but I'm thriving in this season. I will flourish in this season. I will move forth in this season. All sickness will be removed. All disease will be moved. I'm renewing my mind. And it's speaking what God says. And being transformed by the renewing of my mind. And then what happens? Then the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God will manifest in my life like never before. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Transformation of the mind will bring elevation. As we talked about yesterday, we we war in the spiritual with the gift that's not carnal. The battle of the mind is where it starts at. And we get reconnected to the heavenly Wi-Fi. We get reconnected to the downloads of what the Lord is saying. We get on the same frequency of what God is saying. There's always voices challenging, trying to mislead you or deceive you. But when you're connected and you got the direct connection, you're going to know what to reject and what to accept. When you got the direct connect, you'll know exactly where to go and where not to go in this season. What to start and what to stop. Some of you need to stop doing the same thing because you see it's not bringing no change. It's not working harder on our thing, but it's working harder on the thing that the king has said for you to work on. To be in the position where the Lord, our God, has called you to be in. That's when you start to thrive. That's when you start to elevate. That's when you start to change. Just because it looks good, sound good, doesn't mean it's good. Doesn't mean that it's God. It can look a certain way. Oh, this feels like it's God. It can feel a certain way. I feel this relationship disguised. But we have to examine and say, is this just good or is this God? I want to do the God thing. I want to just do the good thing. I could just serve anywhere. I could serve. I could go any in any church and serve. Put me anywhere. I will th because how I am has God developed me as a servant unto the people. But I want to be in the place where God has called me to be. That's when I will thrive. That's when things will open up. I want to be in the workplace where God has called me to be. That's when I will thrive. That's when God will open up. I don't want to just be doing things just to be doing things. But we want to be doing things because we want to be serving the king. That's when acceleration comes. That's when change comes. That's when uplifting and strongholds come down. That's when barriers start to be broke. Abraham couldn't be. Abraham couldn't be. Even in the famine, God placed him. God sent him to Egypt. And guess what? He came back with spoils enough to get him through the famine. When God calls you to a certain place, no matter what's going on in that place, you will thrive because you're in the divine timeline of God. I'm already praying. Father, I thank you for this morning that our minds being transformed, our minds being renewed. We're coming to a place, Lord God, that we're not tolerating, Lord God, the foolishness that's been in our life. We're not tolerating sickness. We're not tolerating poverty. We're not tolerating, Lord God, bad relationships. We will not tolerate it, but we will eliminate it. We eliminate and we cut off all bad relationships, all bad habits, all things that, Lord God, that brings us in a place of stagnant. We come against the ways of the enemy and we come into the presence of the Lord. We come into a place where we will be above and not beneath. We come in, Lord God, that our feet is being ordained and led by you, that the steps of the righteous are ordained by you. Lord, get us in the position that we will thrive in every position and everything that you called us into. I speak that the people who are on the sound of my voice will be in the right place. They will be doing the right thing with the right people. I speak the right relationship. Destiny partners are coming to them. I speak, Lord God, that they're moving above this, the natural and coming into the supernatural. That, Lord God, the divine favor is their portion. I speak 
Lord God, then this season that divine healing is their portion. I speak, Lord God, divine restoration and restitution is their portion. As you said, when a thief is found, he must restore sevenfold. I speak sevenfold. I speak a newness. I speak a freshness. I speak that they were reclaiming everything that belongs to them. They were reclaiming their time. They were reclaiming their health. They were reclaiming their relationship. They were reclaiming that which you call for them. I speak to the gift that you have given them, that you stir up the gift for them. Let the gift come forth. As your word declares, your word says, your gift will make room for us and place us before great people. I thank you that that zeal is coming. Lord God, they have a zeal for you. They're not overzealous, but they have a zeal to go and do your will, that the good and perfect will of God will be demonstrated. Lord God, we thank you for not just words in this season, but demonstration of your power, demonstration of your love, demonstration of your peace, demonstration of what you have called us into, that the people will see our good works and glorify the Father in heaven. We thank you that we are glorifying you now, Father, that we are testifying of you now, that Lord God, that we are going to a place that we've never been before. I thank you, Lord God, that they have a righteous vengeance about them to take back what's rightfully theirs. As you declared and that you said the kingdom of God suffers violence but the violent take it back by force. We thank you in this season. The battle is not ours but the Lord's. As you fight alongside us, as you fight with us, we declare that we will spoil the enemy. We go into the enemy camp and take everything back that belongs to us. I thank you that Lord God we're taking back our health. We're taking back our wealth. We're taking back our projects. We're taking back our assignment. We're taking back the life that you have called us to have this morning. Lord God, we will not drag our feet, but we will be elevated. We will not drag, Lord God, our hands, but we will put our hands to what you called us to. Let our words be words of light. Let our words be salted. Let our words bring favor. Let our words be changed. As you said, what some of the things we ask for when we pray, believe that we receive them and we shall have them. We ask this in Jesus' name. He says if we ask in his name, we shall have it. As the Lord Jesus intercedes on our behalf right now, we come against every plot of the enemy that Lord God has put seeds of unrighteousness, of fear, worry, and doubt in our mind. We come against that mind that's been complex, that mind that has been confused, that mind that has not been stable. I speak a renewing and transform of the mind right now as they begin to study the word, as they begin to bring the right intellect, to bring the right music, the right words in their minds. Their mind is being changed right now. I disconnect any words that were spoken. I disconnect them from anything that was said in the last couple years, last couple weeks, or last couple days that brought torment into their head. I thank you that you said that fear is not of you. You have not given us a spirit of fear, but peace, love, and a sound mind. I speak the mind of Christ is their portion. We know what to do and how to do. We know who to connect with and who not to connect with. I speak the spirit of discernment is their portion. I speak spirit of revelation is their portion. I speak the spirit of wisdom is their portion. I speak the spirit of knowledge is their portion. I thank you, Lord God. In this season, their mind is being shifted. They're not thinking small, but they're thinking large. I thank you, Lord God, that you're breaking barriers. You're breaking tradition. You're breaking habits. You're breaking things off of them that's been plaguing them for too long. We break the strongholds of the enemy. We speak elevation, transformation, and change like never before. We thank you this morning. Our mind has been shifted to new to a new beginning. Our mind is being cleared. Our mind is being cultivated. Our mind is being elevated to think in the heaven ranks. We thank you, Lord God. We are not here by happenstance, but you got us here on assignment with purpose, on purpose. This season, we are not tolerating, but we will eliminate all debts. We will eliminate the sickness. We will eliminate the disease because we're coming in the name of the Almighty who's given us dominion, who's given us clarity, who has vindicated us, who's justified us, who has sanctified us, who has placed us in this time. We thank you for the divine power that's been given to us. As Christ raised up, he gave gifts unto man. We thank you for the gifts. He has given power unto his children. He has all power and he gives power to his children, to your children this morning. I speak power unto you. I speak unleashing the authority that God has given to you. That you don't just depend on a man, but you have the authority. You have God's plan. You have the capability. You have the capacity already in you. Power comes to you. Wisdom comes to you. 
Elevation comes to you. Financial breakthrough comes to you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for those who are connected. Thank you for those who are joined. Thank you for those who are sown seeds. Those who are connected for the first time and follow. Uh, go to the page. Look at the videos. My name is Joseph Gibbons. My assignment is to tell the body of Christ to dream it, start it, finish it. To complete their assignment. Leave no work left undone. If you don't finish it, you don't leave, you leave work left undone. We want to be about the Father's business that we will get the job well done, my good and faithful servant. That is the assignment. That is the mission statement. What God says. That's my meat and my potatoes. So connect to me. You say, Lord, I want to go further in my assignment. I want to be about your business. I want to dream. I want to start it. I want to finish that which you called me to do. Amen. Connect through the bio. YouTube, these videos and others have will be uploaded at a later time. And those who desire and say, man of God, this message connected, this message resonated with me. I want to sow into the ministry. I want to sow seed. The ways to give is in the bio. Thank you for those who have already connected, those who have already given and you desire to give um, a seed. The way to give is in the bio. I thank you guys for joining me today. Those right now, Hallelujah. We have done. The word has come forth. Prayer has come forth. Uh, the prophetic message has come forth. If you need prayer, and you said, man, the guy, can you connect with me on this particular thing? When I'm on here, I like be specific. It's not that God doesn't know, but you got to know what you want as well. God says, what sort of things you ask for when you pray? Say, we say. So say what you want. And if that's you and you say, man, God, can you come in agreement with me on this? I'm typing in quickly. Let me know where you're watching from. Amen. Those who are still here, let me know where you're watching for. If this is your first time and connecting. And if you have a prayer request, put it in the comments right now before we uh, end this live. Amen. I pray that this message today was a blessing. I come on uh, Monday through Friday uh, between 7, 730 Eastern Standard Time as the Lord leads and directs. Amen. And once again, follow the bio for the YouTube link for those who want to connect on other media, social media platforms. It's in the bio. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said I can't repeat that. I, I said a lot, so I went, when you said that, I don't know what it said. So follow in the link and then go back. Uh, amen. Amen from Arizona. Thank, bless you, bless you. I know Arizona, Georgia being the house, Pittsburgh being the house a lot, uh, Florida being the house, different places be connected. So does anyone need prayer? Everybody's good? I think I probably covered everything that needs to be covered. Amen. So, okay. So, like I said, today is my birthday. Now I'm about to go do the second part, do a couple little things. Um, get ready for dinner tonight. And um, I do a whole birthday weekend, so... I got today, tomorrow, the whole weekend. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. I need help with my spiritual battles. But as the message was saying, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Um, number one, the battle's not yours, but the Lord's. Um, don't try to fight physical with something spiritual. You, um, the way that you're speaking, I'm quite sure you know that. So, if, it, if things that keep cycling, sometimes we got to address things in our life. Look at what things that we're doing. Are we allowing a foothold or something for the enemy to come through? Do we have some things that we need to cut off? Um, that's what I would say right now. If there's some things that you know that 
that you're holding on to. It could be unforgiveness. It could be bitterness. It could be, and let me share this with you people. When you say, just because you say, I don't worry about it, does not mean you have forgiven that person. Don't get it twisted. In the realms of the spirit, it's not ignorant. It knows the seeds. It sees the seeds of the heart, the intents of what you're saying. And even when we say things, be careful what you say. Because there's no, oh, I was just playing. I'm always broke. Oh, no, I was not. No, I'm just saying, no, we don't just say when it comes to things in the in the spirit. It's not, oh, I'm just saying, no, you have to guard your mouth, guard your heart out of the bunch of your heart. The mouth speaks. So it can't be always something or I'm always this or just that, blah, blah, blah. They get on my nerves. Oh, this thing's just killing me. Be mindful of words that you speak in the atmosphere. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So you have to speak. If you, if you don't know what to say, don't say nothing. Just hold it until you get the right words, until you get the right scripture. Pray what the word says. Uh, Tristy, Tristy L1. So look and examine your life. Because if we don't, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. If we don't stop doing certain things, even though we're praying, it's not going to stop certain things, if that makes sense. If we're doing certain things, allowing the attacks to come, even though we're praying, the attacks still going to come. The limitations still going to be there. Why? Because we're given jurisdiction for these things to operate in our life. But we, once we repent and come back to the Lord, immediately when you repent, immediately when you ask for forgiveness, you're no longer bound, you're no longer restricted. When you say, I'm turning away from this thing and I'm turning unto the Lord, when I say, I'm not going to let unforgiveness be in my heart, because if unforgiveness in your heart and business in your heart, you your prayer is not heard. The word says that. When you stand, pray, forgive, that your Father in heaven will forgive you of your sins. And hear your prayers. Your prayers can be restricted and restrained by unforgiveness because God says, I owe you nothing because I've forgiven you. So you owe them. They don't owe you nothing. God don't hold our use over you. You don't hold our use over them. No matter what it was. No matter what it was. No ma When I say no matter what it was, I mean no matter what it was. They molested you. Forgive them. That's, that's because that, even that, uh, that trauma with the unforgiveness will still hold you, haunt you, and restrain you. So it's not about them. What they did was malicious. What they did was wrong. We've all fall short. The thing that I love about the Lord, he puts no limits on sin. All sin is a snitch, a, a snare in his nose. He doesn't like it. No flesh can dwell amongst him. That's why we needed the blood to cover. That's when, when he sees us, he said, oh, the blood's on them. Okay. They're one of ours because he, he they repented. They turned back to me. Amen. So when we're in situations, first do a self-examination. And then as we pray, we say, Lord, every stronghold, every barrier, anything that I've connected to, I disconnect. Anything that's been holding in these battles uh, that anything I've been doing allow these battles to happen allow these restrictions to happen Lord God I disconnect if I have unforgiveness in my heart right now Lord I forgive I let it go I turn it over to you Lord show me how to operate in the spirit of love in spite of what they've done in spite of what they said Lord God I disconnect from anything that's not of you and as you do that wholeness is going to come to you Peace is going to come to you. Redemption is going to come to you. As you come back to the Father, he says, if you confess your faults, he's faithful to forgive, you, forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, it's a cleansing that has to take place in our soul. There's a cleansing that has to take place in our mind. It, we've been in a certain place for so... Uh, hallelujah. We've been doing certain things for so long. And then we ask ourselves why things ain't moved. But we know the things that we've been holding on to and we don't release it unto the Lord. Or we've been in sin for so long. Listen, 
we we forgiven we are forgiven and we will be redeemed but sometimes the effect of that decision can linger if you had <laughs> if you have a child fornicate did your thing a child comes you ask the Lord for forgiveness that child is still there your forgiveness that child is loved by the Lord. You you love by the Lord, but the the effects of what happened is right there. To you, you know that child is there. That's your child, right? So certain things that we do can have a longer effect on us, a longer attachment. So sometimes it's a process of God uprooting, of God disconnecting. So the more that we die to self, the more that we become a living sacrifice holy and acceptable, the more things start to come off us. God starts peeling back them layers. God starts cultivating the mind. God starts bringing uh, redemption and realigning our mind so we start thinking different. Then we don't start doing the same thing that we used to do. When the temptation comes and the temptation will continue. If you if you battle with pornography, that thing will still try to pull you and you'll be like, what's this come from? If you battle with uh, any addictions, alcohol, that thing will still try, that seed will try to resonate itself. That's why Paul says, I crucified his flesh daily. That's why you have to be mindful of what you watch, what you look, who you surround yourself with. Amen. So that's how we break that spirit.